What is up everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. In today's video guys, I got an update for you about Crypt Crawler, my Mint Tin Dungeon Crawler game that I've been designing and you dudes have been playing on Tabletop Simulator in Steam, which is what you're seeing right here on your screen right now. And you guys have been giving me some really awesome feedback and I have implemented some of your suggestions in the game and I've also been playtesting on my own and changed and tweaked some other things that I thought were necessary. So I wanted to give you guys a quick update and show you what has changed in the game. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the resolution and dungeon deck over here. There are three cards that have changed on the resolution side of the card. So if you look at this first card right here, you'll see this is the one that has the well event. Up at the top of the card where the four modifiers are for the enemy stats, the shield symbol, which is the enemy's toughness, that used to be a one and I have bumped it down to zero. So there used to be six cards that would modify the enemies to get plus one toughness and now that is down to five. So just under a third of the dungeon deck, since there are 16 cards, will now give plus one toughness to the enemies. And I've also made another sweeping change to the game that is going to help with the enemy's toughness getting too high because I did have some people mentioning to me like, hey, you know, I got to a certain point to where an enemy's toughness was just too high from the modifiers that I got to where I literally couldn't hit it. It was impossible to move forward in the game. And that actually happened to me a couple times too, namely with the goblin. Uh, the goblin starts with one toughness and there were a couple times I was on level two and I would fight a goblin and both of his modifier cards would flip to give him plus one toughness per card. So his toughness went up to three and I just simply didn't have a weapon that was able to hit him or I would like have to roll a six, which, you know, in those cases, if you have to roll a six, that does suck, but at least you can hit. But in the cases where you can't hit him at all, that's just not any fun. Now, keep in mind, it might still happen in very, very, very rare occasions because you know, it, you're drawing cards, it's luck. You're drawing cards and rolling dice and that's just, that's part of the fun of the game is the randomness and the luck. But I want stuff like that to happen very, very rarely, if at all. And so far from my playtesting, um, with this one simple change and another very big change that I made that I'll, I'll tell you guys about in just a little bit, um, I haven't run into that problem anymore. So yeah, we should be good to go there. The next resolution card that I changed is the one with the Noxious Gas Trap event and the purple star um, event that happened, or not event, but the purple star outcome that happens if you push your luck into this card. It used to be that you'd fight a demon and get two gold. Well, now you're going to fight a troll and get one food. So there still is one other resolution card in the dungeon deck that will make you fight a demon if you push your luck into the purple star card. But there was only one troll encounter before. So now it's, it's flipped around. Instead of there being two demon encounters and one troll, it's now two troll encounters and one demon because the demon is the hardest enemy in the game and I want him to be a very rare occurrence that you come across him. So you guys are going to be hopefully fighting trolls more often uh, with this change. And of course, you'll get that extra stamina from the food after defeating the troll on this card. And then lastly, this card with the golden idol event here, you'll see where the red diamond uh, portion of the card is. That used to just say one Banshee. Now it says one Banshee and one oil. And my reasoning behind that is because anytime me personally, like anytime I would walk into a red room and I would flip this as the first card, I would pretty much always skip it. I'm like, no, I don't want to fight a Banshee at all. So I want to push my luck. There is zero incentive. Now, say you have like no oil left in your lantern and you only have a couple steps to take before you start taping, taking fear or or, you know, or maybe you have one oil and you only have a couple steps to take before you completely run out and you start taking fear. Or worse yet, maybe you've completely run out of oil and you've been taking some steps in the dark and you're gaining fear. Well, if you run into this card, you might say, oh, it's going to suck to fight a Banshee, but I really could use that oil. So it incentivizes you to make a tougher decision instead of just being a no brainer and going, no, I'm not fighting the Banshee. I'm going to push my luck. So this incentivizes you to think, Maybe I do want to fight the Banshee now because the Banshee was like just, it wasn't coming up. I, I hardly ever fought a Banshee. I maybe only fought one once or twice in all the times that I play tested the game. Um, and there is one other card that if you push your luck, it forces you to fight a Banshee. So this should, uh, this should increase the Banshee, the Banshee combat and the Banshee sightings in the game. So those are the three changes to the resolution cards in the dungeon deck. And the next thing I changed is I changed a single enemy in the game. I changed the spider. So the spider used to give you two soul fragments. Now it gives you one soul fragment. And my reason for this is because you fight spiders a lot. They have zero toughness. And even though they do have that one strength and they are fast, 
they they really don't deal very much damage. You can see their damage output is really, really low, and they're just really easy to kill, and they were awarding too much soul fragments. They were awarding too many soul fragments, in my opinion, and I was finding that by the time I'd get to, like, level two in the dungeon, I could get all three soul fragments because I'd have enough shards, and um, yeah, I didn't like that. It, it was just, it's going by too quickly, and I want players to have to venture deeper into the dungeon and uh, face enemies that have more modifier cards added to them. So it spices things up and adds more difficulty and length to the game. And believe it or not, making that one single change, there were so many times that I've play tested since making this change that I would be one fragment shy of being able to cash in on a shrine. And um, yeah, most of the time when I play now, I'll get to like the end of level three before I find all the crystals or sometimes even push into level four. And that is exactly what I want. I feel like that's the sweet spot. And you know, if you get super lucky, you might still get games where you get all three shards on on floor two, but I don't want that to be the norm. I want you to have to go a little bit deeper into the dungeon. So hopefully that will, uh, that will, you know, affect that to some degree. And it's just a small sample size on my end. So you guys will have to let me know what your experience is with that. But that's the one change to the enemies that I made. Um, I also made like just some like ease of ease of play, like quality of life changes. I added an infinity bag for the cleared room tokens. So now if you go into a level and you know, you're getting ready to leave the level and you have all your tokens out on the board or whatever, now you can just hover over them and click the delete key to get rid of them and put your, your uh, map tile back over here and you have an infinite bag of those. So now you don't have to pick them up and drag them over and drop them off to the side. So that's just a quality of life thing. Same thing with the dice. There's a bag of infinite dice and I added burn counters and there's a little infinite bag of those. So you can pull those burn counters over to your life and set that depending on however much burn damage you take from enemies. And of course you could just delete those when you're done with it because you have an infinite amount in the bag. Um, and then also for the soul crystals bag, I added a reminder to shuffle it. So you can use the R key on your keyboard to shuffle. You can also shuffle the dungeon deck with the R key. Shuffle anything that's shuffleable with the R key. So make sure that you shuffle these up before you draw out of the bag so that you'll get something different every time. Uh, so those are like the quality of life changes that I made to the game. And then let's get on to another massive change that I've made to the game. So uh, as mentioned, uh, running into enemies that had really high toughness and them being impossible to hit is no fun. So I have bumped up and buffed all of the races by one strength. So every race in the game now has one strength. And you'll notice there is a new race in the game. It is the dwarf. And I've also made another big change that I'm sorry, man, I can't remember who suggested this? I can't remember your username, but you know who you are if you're watching this. Shout out to you, dude. This was a fantastic idea that you had. Um, the game used to have five cards. They would have a race on one side and then the class on the other side. And somebody chimed in and was like, you know, it kind of sucks a little bit that like, like if you pick a certain race, it locks you out of playing the class on the other side of the card. Um, and they were like, what if you had six cards and on three of them, you had the race on the front and the back of each card. And then for the other three, you have the class on the front and back of each card, as you can see here. So that's what I've gone ahead and done. So now you could be any class and you can play any race. So all of the combinations are, uh, are now usable, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, you'll notice that we have the dwarf is a new playable race over here. And as mentioned, um, I buffed the strength of every character. So of course the dwarf didn't exist before. He would have had zero strength in the old, the old way, but now he's got one strength. The elf used to have zero. He's up to one. The gnome also used to have zero and is up to one. And then the human lizard folk and the orc all used to have one strength. And now all three of those guys have two strength, as you can see here. So that's going to make hitting enemies that get Toughness modifiers, much easier to deal with, and you'll be able to conserve your stamina a little bit more. I'm sure there, you know, there's definitely still going to be some times where you're going to want to spend your stamina to inflict extra damage to enemies, and it might even be a necessity in order to stay alive. But this is also going to remedy a second issue that some people were having, that they weren't able to use their skills that require stamina because they were having to spend all their stamina to deal damage to enemies, especially enemies that were getting really crazy toughness modifiers. Now, keep in mind, this is cards and dice. There's a lot of luck that is still going to happen sometimes. It's just the way the game goes. You're going to run into enemies that are just, they're really beefy, man. They're really tough or they're wearing a lot of armor. And I think that's cool. I think it's cool that sometimes you're going to run into that but I don't want it to be all the time to where it's bogging the game down and it's making it not fun. And I want you to still be able to use your skills that require 
stamina in order to do so. So now we're going to get into uh, pretty much the last change that I've made and a big change are the classes. So let's check out the new class cards here. You'll notice at the top, the classes now have a unique weapon. That was another really cool suggestion that one of you guys had, and I absolutely love the idea. So now, and it's something that I wanted to do. I was kind of thinking about adding unique gear to each class and race, but I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do it. So I think this is a, a really elegant solution. So each class is going to have their own unique starting weapon. So you can see here for the warrior, he starts with the club that used to be the weapon that you started with over here, but now it's gone. It is replaced with the starting weapon on each class. He starts with the club. If you roll a one, two, or three, it does one damage. If you roll a four or five, it does two damage. And if you roll a six, it does four damage. So it's a little bit buffed from what the old club used to be. And it also says you inflict plus one damage to rats and spiders. So there you go. Each weapon is also going to have like a cool little unique ability that it does as well. And I believe all of the warrior's skills have stayed the same. I did make a little bit of a change to adrenaline rush. It's just sort of like a wording change. It says once per battle, you may spend stamina to inflict two damage per stamina spent. No more than two stamina may be spent for this skill. It used to say in parentheses max two, but I feel like this makes it a little bit more clear. So typically whenever you attack for each attack you do, you can spend up to three stamina per attack to deal one extra damage. But when you use Adrenaline Rush, it says no more than two stamina may be spent for this skill. So this replaces your um, your ability to spend three stamina once per battle. Instead, you can spend up to two to inflict two damage per stamina spent. So I just want to clarify, you can't spend three and then spend an extra two to do two more per. This replaces that. So hopefully that's that's clear enough right there. Um, let's see, is there anything else that changed in here? No, I think all of that is the same. And then on the flip side of this card, we have the wizard. The wizard is going to start with the staff. So the staff, if you roll a one, two, or three, it does one damage. A four or five, it does two damage. And if you roll a six, it does two damage. It's a staff. It's not very strong. It's not going to be like a club, like the warrior. So it's going to do a little bit less damage, but it makes up for it because it's a magical staff. You are a wizard after all. Once per battle, you may spend one stamina to inflict two damage to an enemy. And this is going to take into account the enemy's toughness. So you're not going to ignore their toughness. Uh, that's still going to take their toughness into account. But yeah, you got like a little magical staff that you can spend stamina to inflict some extra damage to enemies with. Um, also, I changed the wording on Fireball. And now it says once per battle, you may spend two stamina to inflict one damage and two B, which is two burn to an enemy. So this is just more consistent with the enemies that inflict burn damage. Let's see if we can find one over here. Let's see, where do we have a mage somewhere? I think I passed up the mage. Is he on the other side of the rat? There he is. So yeah, you could see like if he does four or five, he does two B or six, he does three B. And of course, this is just for this play test. I'm sure that will change in the final game. I'll probably put maybe like a little a little flame symbol or something like that to, to show that it's dealing fire damage. But yeah, just to keep things somewhat consistent within this beta, I went ahead and changed the wording on that one. And I think, uh, oh, and then magic aura has also changed. So now it says when an enemy inflicts damage to you, gain one stamina. It used to say something like whenever an enemy inflicts damage to you, you can spend one stamina to prevent one damage. But I didn't really like that. I kind of want the cleric to be more of the character that heals and prevents damage. So now the wizard, whenever you take damage as the wizard, you gain one stamina, which is pretty cool. And then the ice spikes has changed uh, wording. It's essentially the same thing. It says once per battle, you may spend three stamina to inflict four damage to an enemy. Your enemy skips their next attack. It used to say freeze the enemy, but now it's more clear. Your enemy skips their next attack. Then moving on, we have the cleric. He starts with the rusty chain as his weapon. It does one damage if you roll a one, two, or a three. If you roll a four or a five, it does two. And if you roll a six, it does three damage. And it says to increase your hero's speed by one. So whatever race you play, if you're the cleric, you got the chain and that thing is quick, man. It's like the chain from, uh, from, um, oh, what is that game on Super Nintendo? Castlevania. There it is. It's like the chain from Castlevania. That thing's quick, bro. So you're going to increase the speed with your character if you play as the cleric and you're using the rusty chain. Um, I don't think any of his other things have changed. No, they did. They did. So the heal ability changed once per dungeon level. It used to say once per dungeon level, you may spend one stamina to heal. I think it was like two HP. Or it used to say you could spend two stamina to heal two HP, but now it's changed. Once per dungeon level, you may spend one stamina to heal three HP. And I believe the other stuff... Oh, and then on Searing Light, I've made a wording change to some of these skills. So you'll see it says, 
Once per battle, you may spend three stamina to inflict four damage to an enemy, ignoring their toughness and heal two HP. So you get to completely ignore their toughness with that skill. You won't take that into account. And, you know, and take note too, if, if ever something says to deal damage to an enemy and it doesn't say to ignore their toughness, it's safe to assume that you need to factor their toughness into it. Then on the flip side of the cleric, we have the necromancer, and he's going to start with the skull as his weapon. A 1, 2, or 3 is going to deal 1 damage. If you roll a 4 or 5, it does 2 damage. And if you roll a 6, it does 2 damage. And once per battle, you may increase your fear by 1 to inflict 3 damage to an enemy. So you heard that right. You'll actually increase your own fear level to inflict damage to an enemy. And as I was just talking about with the cleric, notice it doesn't say to ignore the enemy's toughness. So you will have to factor in their toughness with this one, but you're dealing three damage. This might even be too powerful. Um, we'll have to find out whenever we play test. So, and then I'll go through his skills since this is a brand new uh, class in the game. He has decay as his first skill that you get at five XP. When you inflict damage to an enemy, decrease their toughness by one for the rest of the battle. So that's gonna also help with enemies that have crazy toughness modifiers. Whenever you reach 11 XP, he'll gain the Soul Harvest skill, which says when you kill an enemy, you may spend two stamina to heal four HP and increase your fear by one. So and there's a theme here. He likes to increase his own fear. And the reason is if you make it to 18 experience points, you unlock his Gaze of Terror skill, which says once per battle, you may spend three stamina to inflict damage to an enemy equal to your current fear. And notice it doesn't say to ignore their toughness. You take their toughness into account. But dudes, if you're sitting on like a ton of fear, you could dish out a lot of damage with the Gaze of Terror. So this is sort of just like a, a cool concept that I have. I'm not sure if it's going to work in practice. So this is definitely something that I want feedback about when you guys play test the game. So be sure to let me know. And I'm going to be doing my own play, play testing too. And I'm really hoping this works out because I like this idea of using fear to deal damage as the necromancer and then next we have the ranger his starting weapon is the slingshot if you roll a one two or a three it does one damage if you roll a four five or a six it does two damage and when you roll a six to hit an enemy you ignore their toughness um, also the quick shot skill it says once per battle you may spend one stamina to inflict one damage to an enemy ignoring their toughness I'm not sure if that one changed. I think that one might actually still be the same. Uh, also for track, I changed the wording a little bit. It says once per dungeon level, you may look at the resolution side of the top three cards of the dungeon deck. So you can look at both sides. You can look at the dungeon side and the resolution side, but I wanted to be sure that I clarified that you're allowed to look at the resolution side of those top three cards. And that'll change your decision-making about if you're gonna wanna push your luck into an upcoming room and stuff like that. So it'll give you some, some information about what's coming up in the, in the next rooms. And then uh, finally, the Reign of Arrows changed. It used to not say ignore their toughness, but now it does. So once per battle, you may spend three stamina to inflict five damage to an enemy, ignoring their toughness, which makes that really, really powerful. And then last but not least, guys, we have the Rogue. His starting weapon is the Shiv. It does one damage if you roll a one, two, or a three. It does two damage if you roll a four or a five. And if you roll a six, it does three damage. And it says to inflict plus one damage to enemies with toughness greater than one. So if an enemy has a toughness of two or higher than that, you'll deal an additional plus one damage because the shiv will pierce through their armor. Um, and I'm not sure if anything else changed on this one. Nope, I think that's... No, I think that is it. Yeah, that is it for that one. Um, oh, oh, the Shadow Strike skill. It says when a battle begins and your speed is higher than the enemy's, inflict two damage to the enemy, ignoring their toughness. So I tacked on the little ignoring their toughness uh, bit to the end of that one too. So there we go, guys. That's all of the changes, I believe, unless I missed something. But I think that's it. That's all the changes that I've made to the game so far for uh, Crypt Crawler here, guys. And yeah, I think this is definitely going to make the game a lot more fun and a lot more balanced and not completely impossible. So hopefully I'm going to be hearing about some of you guys getting to the bosses and maybe even beating them. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments below, guys, once you play test the game and uh, let me know if you like the changes. And also I want to mention too, I'm thinking about, you'll see like on these cards, even though you know this is just a play test and this is a beta on these item cards, there's a big blank box down at the bottom of the card. I want to add some text to these items. I want to add some special abilities to these items, but uh, I wanted to get out the, the game in its current state. Before I get into doing all that, that'll probably be in the next uh, the next release of the beta. So look forward to that. I'm going to be actively working on that 
And uh, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. So hey, if you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up like button, click the red subscribe button, and click the bell icon so you can stay notified every time I upload brand new videos. And like I said, guys, uh, once you play test the game some more, please let me know down in the comments section of this video what your thoughts are about the game and if you feel like it's improved. And of course, give, give me more feedback. I want all of the feedback. None of it is too critical. I'm not taking anything to heart. I'm not getting offended by anything. Um, I'm loving all the feedback that you guys are giving me. So thank you so much for playtesting the game, for showing your interest in the game. It's so freaking cool, dude. Seriously, I'm having an absolute blast doing this. So thank you guys so much. And hey guys, until the next one, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.